Good evening. Let's get right to breaking news now. A shooting in northeast Portland involving a deputy. Police say at least one Multnomah County deputy fired at a suspect this afternoon in the Lloyd district. There is also a car crash related to this and police are investigating several crime scenes. The area we're talking about is on Northeast Grand around Widler and Holiday Streets. Our Daisy Caballero joins us there and Daisy, you've got an update from police just a short time ago. Yeah, Laurel, David, very, very limited information that investigators and officials were able to share. But what they were able to tell what they were able to tell me was that, again, like you said, a Multnomah County Sheriff deputy did shoot at someone. They also told me that they confirmed that there are a total of three crime scenes throughout the Lloyd District that they are looking into and investigators are looking into. They were also able to tell me that there is one person that was sent to the hospital with with gunshot wounds. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys or actually we'll, we'll just continue with the story. We are also told that the initial call on this incident came at around 135. The crime scene spans at least four to five blocks of the Lloyd district, creating heavy traffic in the areas. They do say and ask people to completely avoid the area if at all possible. Cars have been asked to again take detours to avoid the blocked off crime scene and this has closed off numerous major streets like Northeast Grand Avenue. And we did speak with the man that lives in a building on the corner of Grand and Holiday. He witnessed the shooting outside of the hotel Eastland. Here's him describing what he heard and saw. I just heard gunshots. I looked through the window. I was cooking soup. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. That quick. And I saw him come out of there. That was it. Quicker than snot, he was down the road. The Subaru is also involved in what's going on here, and we saw officers bring out a canine after finding suitcases in the trunk. Now again, there are multiple agencies assisting the Portland Police Bureau who is in charge of this investigation, and they did tell us that they will most likely not be able to give us any new details today, but tomorrow morning and they're expected to stay here for at least the next few hours. David, Laurel. Thank you, Daisy, and we'll continue to update you as this breaking news situation develops. You can look for the latest here on air on KGW.com and on our mobile app. Let's get to a major shakeup in leadership for the Portland Thorns and the Timbers. Two executives are gone after an independent investigation found sexual misconduct and emotional abuse were systemic in the National Women's Soccer League. Gavin Wilkinson and Mike Golub have been with the club for years, but today they were both fired. Evan Watson joins us now, and Evan, a lot of people have been calling for these firings. Laurel, those calls ramped up on Monday when an independent review laid out a systemic issues in the NWSL. The Thorns are one of the teams at the center of this. Former Thorns coach Paul Riley is accused of sexual and emotional misconduct against former Thorns players. The investigation, released Monday, revealed that the team was aware of the allegations as early as 2014, but Riley wasn't fired until a year later. When he was fired, the team didn't mention anything about the misconduct, and they thanked him publicly for his service. Riley, who has denied the allegations, went on to coach another team in the NWSL. The investigation showed patterns of misconduct by Thorns and Timbers owner Merritt Paulson and front office leaders Gavin Wilkinson and Mike Golub. The report also said the Portland Thorns were not forthcoming with certain information and the organization attempted to hinder the investigation. Yesterday, Paulson announced he would temporarily step aside from all Thorns related decision making. And today, the team decided to fire Wilkinson and Gallup. We talked with Oregonian columnist Bill Orm yesterday. He called for this and said it's time for Paulson to sell the team. The only solution here is for a clean slate with the Portland Timbers Football Club, and that means you know, firing the people who who have been in charge of this club and created the toxic environment. That's you know, obviously that is Gavin Wilkinson and Mike Golub, and then it's Barrett Paulson who allowed all of this to happen under his reign, who did, worked behind the scenes to keep the allegations uh, out of public view. Paulson also released a short statement yesterday, apologizing for what Paulson called the organization's role in a quote gross systemic failure to protect players' safety. Paulson added he doesn't plan to make further public statements on the matter until the league completes a separate investigation in November. More to come here, Evan. Thank you for the update.
And developing this evening, a fire at a senior living center in St. Helens has left one resident dead and several others injured. Investigators now working to pinpoint the cause. Tim Gordon at the Columbia Hills Retirement Center. Tim, witnesses reporting an explosion right about the time the fire got going. Right, David, it was heard and felt by many in this area, including firefighters. They were right up on top of it as they arrived just uh, after 1230 this morning. They say that blast sent burning debris flying throughout this area, but crews dug in to fight the flames and rescue residents. This video shows the smoldering results of the fire that broke out about 1230 Wednesday morning. Crews say six units at the Columbia Hills Retirement Center were on fire when they arrived. That fire accelerated after a big explosion. Resident Tim Minical lives in a different section of the independent living complex, but came out when he heard a commotion. And there was a big, huge boom. That, that, that was scary. Firefighters had a fire to fight and elderly residents to help at the same time, according to Battalion Chief Mike Gorsuch. There were multiple rescues and evacuations, so uh, rescues were all done on this building, the fire building. Rescues were done off the backside through windows, pulling people out as fast as we could, get them out. Firefighters from Columbia River Fire and Rescue and other agencies pulled people out of the burning units. Five went to the hospital and one fire victim died at the scene. We had a fatality last night as well. It's extremely unfortunate in this kind of situation. Um, the hazards involved and the vulnerability is extremely challenging. As local and state fire investigators search for a cause of the fire and the explosion, we learned a firefighter and police officer were also injured and taken to the hospital, treated and released. The entire complex was evacuated. Residents first took shelter at the assisted living complex next door. Then they were moved to a local hotel where the Red Cross and others are helping them out. I love it. I love this place. Tim Minical stuck around, looking forward to getting back into his apartment at a place that's not fancy, but is home. And as for his neighbor that lost their life. I'm sad it happened to anybody. It's, it's terrible. So and, uh, the person I think passed was, uh, was very infirm, so. Now, this place is old enough that it does not have to have automatic sprinklers, and it does not. They're not required. But give crews credit for getting the fire stopped as they did. It thankfully, didn't burn the whole place down. As for the explosion, we know that some residents here and in retirement centers in general use oxygen to help them breathe, and those tanks can be highly combustible. But no word yet if that's what the explosion was all about. Back to you. Tim Gordon in St. Helens tonight. Thank you, Tim. Three teenagers have been arrested for a shooting in Hillsborough. Police say the teens are 16, 15, and 13 years old, all from Multnomah County. Investigators say they attempted to rob a man who was walking, and the victim, a 26-year-old, ended up shot in the shoulder. This was yesterday afternoon on Northeast 106th Avenue between Evergreen Parkway and Cornell Road. The victim is recovering. A fourth person was also arrested after police say they tried to get away in a vehicle but crashed. Listen to this, a wild story from the coast tonight. Several explosive devices have washed up on beaches in the Newport area. Police say yesterday they found three separate devices between Yaquina Bay State Park and Agate Beach. The explosives are white. You see them here. They have a label that reads warning explosive simulator hand grenade. Police are asking people not to touch them and call 911 if they see one. No word yet on where they may have come from. Let's turn to a case of vandalism in Northeast Portland overnight where a half dozen or so people attacked and damaged a coffee shop on Northeast Cully. Much of it recorded on surveillance video. Take a look. Vandals breaking the front windows at Bison Coffee House, then shooting some sort of spray paint inside. Now we caught up with the owner as she cleaned up the mess with the help of friends and family. She said she believes she may have been targeted because of her plans to host what is known as a coffee with a cop event this morning. I've done these events in the past, and they just asked me, would I be willing to host? I mean, somewhere we have to make a change within our community. And so, I mean, I got, you know, I got kids and grandkids and stuff, and we have to make a better for our future. That's my belief, you know, but it's not everybody's belief. Loretta Guzman there not only was able to reopen and serve customers today, she also went ahead with the Coffee with a Cop event. 
Anyone with information about that vandalism is asked to call Portland Police.